How's it going? <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> busy day so far. Busy day. So far, so good. So far, so good. You know what day it is today? <laughs> Uh, Groundhog Day. It is two, 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 <laughs> two, 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 all the twos, which makes it Groundhog Day 2022. Here we are. Doesn't seem like Groundhog Day because we haven't done this over. Now, I want you to pull this up real quick just to make sure so we get the comments on there, see if we're in frame, out of frame, see how that looks. Make sure we get Hi, to everybody. We are just... <laughs> Getting organized here. I'm Lisa. I'm Gary. We're in the home studio. Yes, we are in the studio and thought we'd come to you today with some interesting information about millennials. Because, you know, no one ever thought that the millennials were actually going to buy a home until they did. That's right. So our top story today is millennials are in the marketplace. <music> That's right. So the millennials generation is the largest in this group's the prime. They're in their prime household formation years. Though they are formed 12.3 million new households have been formed since 2012. And in that same amount of time, only 7 million homes have been built. So you can do some quick math there and figure out why we're in the position we're in right now with limited tight inventory in all the markets across the nation. Because we're just from the millennials, we're f 5 million units short. <laughs> That's right. So they're building 7 million, we're 5 million short, and it's just unbelievable. I, I, we can feel the pinch for sure. Oh, definitely. Um, but that's that's why the market, the macro demand for the market is just crazy right now. The builders haven't been able to keep up. Um, the builders are having a hard time also with labor. The supply chain problems and the labor problems are two things that are currently hurting them. But in the last 10 years, they should have built more houses. <laughs> that's right. That's right. I always like to throw a how-to in there. What would you like to how-to? How to write an offer. Is that a uh, how-to? Yes. Uh, Number one thing you start before you write an offer is... You got to get with a lender. That's the number one. You've got to be approved with a lender. If you're paying cash, you got to have your proof of funds. So number one thing on how to write an offer, get with a lender. And boy, do we have a great one. Yeah, we have several depending on your needs. That's right. So another segment of the market is the boomers. Um, 10,000 people turn 65 every day in the United States, if you can believe that. Um, and the older Americans, they are going to double in the next decade. So those people are going to be probably needing some different housing arrangements. So 10,000 people turned 65 today? Today. Today. And they will tomorrow, too. <laughs> do you know any of them? I do. Okay. As we get closer to that age range, we know more of them. Um, they're staying put longer in their family home than they have traditionally. Um, but the survey says they will downsize eventually. Well, I think a lot of reasons are why they're staying in their home longer is the fact that we had COVID hit us. We've had, in our area, we've had a couple of different fires. We've had mudslides. We've had a lot of reasons to keep people put in their places. Keep, mm -hmm. People keep putting their homes. Mm -hmm. That's right. <laughs> so right now, like we said, the, the delta on the macro demand is, you know, at least 5 million units short at least. So did you get us up on that? Uh, nope. We're not there? Nope. We're around. We yep. know that. We are live. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> We're in the studio. Uh-huh. Uh, so if you're thinking about selling, uh, you know, this your house th this year, there's three kind of key points. The demand is strong that are all in your favor, um, coupled with the limited supply. That maximizes your leverage. So what that means as a seller is you're in a pretty strong negotiating position. Number one, you're probably going to get on average three offers on your property. And that's an average depending on your price range and location. That's right. And you could get as high as 90 offers. We've, we've heard of that. I mean, we've 90, heard of it. It's, <laughs> 90 offers. It's just been crazy. You know, you call up, you're like, oh, we have 75 offers already. Oh, good. I'm going to write one. <laughs> so, you, got, you got another one. Man, let's make it 76. Yeah, it's just crazy. But they're going to choose one. They might as well choose yours. And that all depends on a lot about relationships and the relationships that we have in the marketplace with other people. And it depends what you want, where you want to go, what you want to do. I love what this stat said. It said that we have the lowest 
inventory in the last century. Well, when you think about that, you think century, 100 years, but this century is only 22 years. But still, we are at record low inventory of the last 22 years. Yes, the lowest inventory in the last 22 years. That's this century. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I read that quickly and had to chuckle at that, uh, at that one. So anyway, so we're talking about the leverage and the inventory and the other, we have competitive prices. I mean, pretty much every market you're looking in, everyone's kind of surprised at, at the prices. Isn't that wild? I know. I mean, it, it surprises us, so it definitely surprises buyers. And the happiest surprise of all is for the sellers. They love it. Oh my gosh. They, they're like, we couldn't have imagined that that could have ever happened. That's right. I have um, clients coming in this weekend from out of town, and we are going to go look at property. Well, I'm not sure we're going to look at property, or we're just going to tour around. I'm going to show them the neighborhoods, because I pretty much don't have a house in every neighborhood I could even show them, <laughs> or the neighborhoods they might be interested in. I have a friend of mine thinking about selling, and he said, well, if my house is worth $10 million, I'll go ahead and sell it. He got an appraisal on his house and appraised at $17 million, an extra $7 million. He wasn't counting on one. Yeah, that's just crazy. That's the kind of market that we're in right now. <laughs> um, yeah. So if you're thinking about selling a, a home, um, please give us a call. Let's talk about it because it is a terrific time to be talking about that. If you're making plans for 2022, we are um, would love to help you walk through the process. Yes, it's a stroll in the park or it can be <laughs> a uh, <laughs> not so gentle awakening. Well, one of the things that um, if you're thinking about doing some work to your home before you sell it, it might take some extra time because getting the subs there to do the work and the product you might need, you think you can just go get a vanity or get appliances. It might not necessarily be that easy. It might be a longer lead time than you think. So you might want to start a couple months before you are actually planning. Um, Cause if you haven't done any remodel lately, uh, it is a little more challenging to get the supplies you need and the people you need to help you. That's right. Once you get the people in, you got to get the supplies. So it's a definitely a supply chain nightmare. Yes. So we love talking about real estate. If you want to talk about real estate with us, you know, you can always find us at GaryAndLisa.com. Your real estate edge. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks, guys.